before we get started, I want you to know that there's an index in the description. I know that most of you don't want to go through this whole thing, and I don't blame you whatsoever. So you can go to the index and fast forward to any section that you find interesting or that you want to learn more about. Now with that, I present to you how to hag by a real hag main. You've probably heard that the hag is a low tier killer. At base, the hag is honestly not much of a threat. He's had good now. I think she's one of the weaker ones, personally. She has so many shortcomings. She needs a full on character rework. That is a simple fact. You've probably also heard hag mains like myself tell you that she's not. Dude. These traps, though. That was by far the worst game I've had in days. The problem is that with so many high-profile players telling people she's low-tier and that she sucks because she's slower than the other killers, you won't find many people actively trying to learn and play well with her. In this video, I'm going to offer tips to playing hag that will help you become a better hag player. My personal goal with this video is to educate the naysayers and provide proof that the hag can be a good, aggressive killer when played well. Maybe create a wave of hag players that understand how she should be played and who become dedicated to playing her to perfection. Or even just persuading players that she's not as bad as they think and this'll get them to give her a go. Add-ons. These will affect your overall strategy in a match. So make sure you pick these with a plan in mind. My standard setup is the rope or cypress necklet and dead fly mud. Anything else is for experimenting or funsies. The rope, cypress, and swamp orchid necklets reduce the setting time of traps with no downside. These are literally her best add-ons. You can stack them for super fast setting speed, but I find that just one necklet is enough. The Deadfly Mud slightly increases the teleport distance, but does not incur a setting speed penalty. This makes it her best distance add-on. It pushes her teleport range just past make your choice range, which makes it pretty effective in the right situation. Dragonfly Wings and the Dried Cicada extend the range even further, but incurs a trap setting penalty. If you use these, you should pair it up with the Cypress or Swamp Orchid Necklet. If you can spare a perk slot, Dragonfly Wings and Dried Cicada are affected by Tinkerer. If you want to go map wide with your traps, go ahead and use this perk. I rarely use these because I find her natural trap setting speed uh, already too slow. The Phantasm Duration Time add-ons uh, should be used if you want to give mind gaming a try. These are the Powdered Eggshell, the Half Eggshell, and the Cracked Turtle Egg. The extended phantasm duration time throws survivors off if they're around one for long enough, but I find that this technique is exceptionally difficult to execute deliberately, so I still kind of ignore them, especially since they reduce teleport range. Her trigger distance add-ons are the bog water, bloodied water, and bloodied mud. I like to use bloodied water to make avoiding traps a little more difficult, since a survivor has to travel a bit farther to avoid triggering a trap. If they mess up, I can teleport. If they succeed, I can close some distance before the chase actually begins. After playing with these a bit more, I found that this can also make chasing survivors much easier also, since the trap is triggered at a larger distance. Stack the waters, trap wide travel areas, and see what happens during a chase. I promise you'll find them pretty interesting. The Pussy Willow Catkins and the Willow Wreath will reveal a survivor's aura upon triggering a trap for 2 and 4 seconds respectively, at the cost of effective phantasm trap range. While not directly useful due to their short duration, these atoms can be used to see which direction a survivor went if you're unable to teleport. Other than that, they're not too useful in my opinion. Rusty Shackles can be powerful for catching survivors off guard with random traps. But since there is no phantasm, survivors' cameras can't be messed with and you can lose some control in chases. The mint rag sounds good, but I personally can't use it. If you can, awesome, but I don't like adding a cooldown to her teleport. I've been seeing a lot more videos of people using mint rag and rusty shackles at the same time. 
I might try this out the next time I get a mint rag. The disfigured ear is good for annoying survivors, but I really don't see the use in this one though. Grandma's heart can be useful when you're chasing a survivor and someone else triggers a trap, but it's not something you can control. If you use this item, pretend you're not using one and play as normal. You probably won't notice the difference anyway. The Scarred Hand and the Waterlogged Shoe. Uh, don't even waste your blood points on these. Which perks are going to help you kill survivors most efficiently? Based on my experience and opinion, there are three that should be on every single hag build, if you're trying to be as try-hard as possible. Other perk choices and builds can be used, of course, but those are fun builds that give you a different playstyle. If you happen to do really well with a different build, share it with others and the strategies that go along with it. No one likes to play one killer the same way every game, after all. Variety is good, but making people unable to understand how they lost to a hag is better. This was a fucking hag. Are you serious? Kidding me? The hag has a natural terror radius of 24 meters, and tier 3 monitor and abuse brings that down to 16 meters. Does she See, have... I, came, I came up there and she was standing right there. Does she have insidious? No, 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 she doesn't. I thought I heard the heartbeat when I was coming up there, and it, like she came through the. Door. Should have warned me, I would have booked it out of there. Yeah, but her terror radius is super tiny. Yeah, her heartbeat is like minuscule. That is retarded. Uh, you know, she, she's, act, she's uh, using, act, she's act using, uh, running monitor and abuse. Yeah. Yeah, she's running monitor and abuse 100%. Uh, they've been running it in depth. It's pretty ridiculous because their terror radius is reduced down to 14 meters. Like, come on. With such a small terror radius, survivors have less time to respond to your approach if they don't see you coming. Ah! This can lead to mistakes while trying to hide or miscalculating how much time they have to perform an action leading to a hit. Tier 3 Nurse's Calling has a range of 28 meters. And smart survivors won't heal while they're in your terror radius, but because Monitor and Abuse gives the hag an effective stalking terror radius of 16 meters, she gets about 2 seconds before a survivor will hear the heartbeat and stop healing. This is enough time to spot a survivor and close the distance while they think they have time to hide or finish healing. Well, you should keep, keep coming. Either way, I'm still gonna... Uh, yes. So I randomly found her. Yeah, I was hanging by the basement to see if I could attempt to do something, but I'm kinda useless. She's on me, go. This perk combo is very powerful on the hag, especially if you decide to let a survivor think they've escaped for a moment so you can find them healing after a few seconds. Make your choice is the newest must-have perk for hag in my opinion. The hag can teleport to a trap triggered by a rescuer and downed them instantly. <laughs> this is too strong. Make your choice with Hag is absolutely like it destroys people. This possibility only exists for the Hag. Not even the nurse can use Make Your Choice as devastatingly effective as the hag. And good survivors will stop healing under the hook once they realize this perk is in play, which can make finding the Make Your Choice victim more difficult. But isn't this the case with every perk? Counterplay is essential to a game like Dead by Daylight, but this is where playstyle and strategy come into play. This one perk won't win you the match, nor will any other killer perk. <coughs> <clears throat> Decisive strike. Knockout is my personal replacement for Hex Ruin. 
I hate hexes. I don't like the possibility of being reduced to three perks before one gen is finished. I play Devour Hope because it can be fun if it sticks around, but we all know what happens to hexes. found the goddamn ruin. I'll talk more about knockout in the time management section. Since we're talking about perks, I thought I would put this survivor perk in the video because players seem to think that this perk alone breaks the hag's viability. And this is where urban evasion comes in super fucking handy. Urban evasion. If a survivor crouches over a trap, the trap is still there. It's still armed, and it can still be set off in the future. This is entirely dependent on your trap placement though. In Survive with Friends groups, they might not see a hag place a trap and think that they're fine. So they'll call in a buddy to rescue, telling them that it's clear. Then boom! Trap. She still had two traps here. A survivor using urban evasion isn't going to be using it all the time. Eventually, they're going to set off a trap for one reason or another. If you can capitalize on that mistake, it's game over for the urban evader. Strategy. Okay, so here's the most important part of the video. Why is the hag not as bad as so many people say? She's slow, her power doesn't injure survivors, she's small which makes it difficult to see over obstacles or through grass or corn, she's slow, her traps can be avoided and easily disabled, and she can't effectively chase survivors because she's slow. Okay, so then why isn't she as good as the other killers? Because she's not meant to be played like the other killers. Every other killer has the speed or ability to directly chase survivors. This is also what makes looping so effective against most of them. You go out into the map and wander around until you stumble upon a survivor and follow them around until you can hit them. This is not how the hag should be played. I mean, obviously, because she's slow. You play chess with the hag. You plan your moves based on past behavior patterns of survivors, and when they fall into these patterns, you'll have traps set up and can teleport to close distances instantly or provide opportunities for bad moves by survivors. As a killer, you already know how to predict routes that they will run and cut them off accordingly. When you play hag, you remember these routes and place traps ahead of time to disorient them and make them run into corners or obstacles during a chase, or jump ahead of them on an obvious path and M1 them into the ground, or even surprise them in such a way to come straight back into your loving arms. Your ability to predict and anticipate a survivor's movement and set traps even before a chase begins is what the skill cap for HAG should be measured against. If you're just going to place traps near gens, pallets, and hooks, then you're just setting yourself up for a long chase later in the match. A chase you won't win. Well, maybe. Don't buy it? It's not going to happen, man. That's like knowing exactly where to put traps every single time. It just doesn't happen. How about a simple example? Some maps have structures where a survivor can jump from a second story to evade a killer, right? As a hag, if you remember this and place a trap at the bottom of a drop when you're in the area, you can instantly catch up to a survivor when they're stunned from the drop. Hooray! Prediction! A chasing killer can simply chase after them, but there's a particularly satisfying feeling to anticipating a survivor's behavior in this manner. Okay, so what? Pallet loops will destroy the hag. Because she's slow. Well, unfortunately, she is more vulnerable to some degree than others to pallet looping. There's no denying that. But you've already thought of the solution. You know you're going to get looped. So if you come across a spot where you're going to get looped, place a trap that'll either cover distance for you to get a hit in, or place it so it'll throw a survivor off, causing a mistake. Okay, further still. What if there is no trap at this particular loop? Well, you have three choices. Follow through and force a pallet drop, place a new trap in the middle of the chase, or fake a placement to move the survivor away. 
You'd be surprised how often survivors will run off into a trapped area to get away from you while you place a trap. So let's talk more about her traps. Several hag mains have come together for this section of the video. Michi and Croak Dead created the guide I'm about to read. They, along with Soren, Spectrobis, and Hex, offered up more clips for this section. While they sound simple, it's important to remember that you need a sound understanding of the hag's natural trap radius and camera flick, in addition to everything I've mentioned up to this point. Most of these words are theirs, but I've changed and added a few things. Anything I added will be noted at the bottom of the screen if it's lengthy and important. Trap mechanics and the different types of traps. First off, let's explain how the traps work. When a trap is triggered, four things happen. A phantasm comes off the ground. The phantasm does a scream-like animation. The phantasm turns to face the survivor who triggered it until you teleport or it fades the phantasm disappears. At any point from phase 1 to the end of phase 4, the hag can teleport to the trap. The second most important ability of the hag trap is the camera flick. When the trap is triggered, a survivor's camera will turn to face the phantasm, which messes up their direction. A skilled hag can use this for multiple effects, depending on the trap's location and the environment. The types of traps we're going to talk about use one out of three tricks the hag can use with her traps. It should be noted that if you decide to use trigger radius add-ons like I like to use, they cause the traps to trigger earlier than intended and can ruin the effect of these types of traps. The instant teleport hit. These types of traps ask the player to teleport extremely fast in order to be already in front of the survivor before they go through the phantasm. ITH Traps. This is where you spam your teleport key in order to teleport as soon as the trap is triggered. If you're fast enough, you can swing and hit a survivor before they have a chance to run through you. This is usually most effective during a chase when a survivor is running directly towards one of your traps. The Looping Trap. A simple trap where the hag traps one point on a specific loop that allows her to utilize the ITH and get a hit in before the survivor can reach safety. The Body Block Trap If a trap is placed in a doorway, or any small corridor in which the killer and survivor can't both go through if the killer is standing right in the middle of it, can act as a body block trap. To use these, use the ITH so you body block the survivor due to you already being there before they can go through the phantasm. This is very effective to prevent survivors from entering buildings, which are usually big loops. The Stun Trap As shown earlier, when Space Coconut talked about prediction, this trap is placed at the bottom of a drop, which allows you to catch up with the survivor instantly and get a hit. And this can be combined with the Wall Trap, depending on the map layout, to force a survivor to spend time turning after the stun, or to cause more trouble for those rare balanced landing users. Camera Flick Traps these traps use the camera flick to make survivors smash walls or go into unsafe paths, allowing the hag to easily catch up to them and get a hit. The Antelope Trap This trap is placed 3 meters away from a loop. As the survivor goes around the loop, the trap will pull them away from the loop, forcing them to spend more time traveling to the pallet and giving the hag a free hit. This trap is best used while already chasing a survivor and trapping the loop mid-chase. This might be more effective when you're using trap setting speed add-ons. Uh, if your trap setting speed is low, uh, this might not be as effective, at least in the middle of a chase. The wall pull trap uses the camera flick to its maximum power. By placing a trap close to a wall, or even better, in a corner, you can make survivors get pulled towards the wall, slowing them down considerably, or even pulling them inside a corner or a dead end, with nowhere to go. These traps allow you to catch up easily and are almost always free hits. It's worth noting that the traps in corners can be placed in two different ways, the first of which is by facing the corner, and the second is by going inside the corner and facing away from it. The first way puts the trap in a little bit further from the corner, making it easier to be triggered. 
The second way puts the trap closer to the corner. The camera flick is thus stronger, as the further you are from the trap when it's triggered, the stronger the camera flick is. This makes add-ons that increase the effective trap range very deadly with this type of trap. These traps should be the ones you use the most, as the possibilities are near endless. The Another Path Traps will prevent a survivor from going towards a pallet or a window by using the camera flick to your advantage. Try placing a trap to the side of pallets and windows. Survivors might get pulled away so far that they simply won't be able to use the pallet or window immediately, giving you a free hit before they go through. You can also use AP traps to make the survivors take unsafe pallets and windows, which can be mind-gamed to gain a free hit. Fear Traps The Hag's traps can be scary and inflict a fear factor into the game. This psychological factor can be used in multiple ways. The Mind Game Trap As seen in the video, you can use a trap to make the survivor that is dropped or vaulted over a pallet slide back towards you, thinking you are going to teleport. When a phantasm pops right next to them, they have to make the choice to either slide back on the pallet or run away. The hag can thus react to their survivor and either let them slide back towards her or teleport to catch up to them fast if they choose to run away. This is where the extended phantasm duration time add-ons can come in handy by giving you more time to choose. The Fake Trap While not necessarily a direct trick, once survivors hear a trap go off, or see the hag, it will make survivors think that there are traps on every gen, hook, window, pallet, and the basement. By placing a trap next to a generator, you can make survivors think you will trap all generators, which will slow the game down by making them crouch in order to even work on said generators. They will think that there are traps all the way down to the basement, and spend more time crouching for the rescue. Now this will gain a considerable amount of time, which always helps. Of course, try to be as unpredictable as possible and always change your tactic when survivors change theirs. Make survivors think that there are traps where there are none and trap in the most unexpected places. Other tips for traps. Already mentioned in the time management section, but having traps already on the field is important before even starting to chase a survivor. If you find one survivor fast, you can hit them, and if they don't go towards any trap, let them go and place more traps in the area. You might find them again easily with Nurse's Calling. It's important to stay hidden early on. You don't want survivors knowing you're the hag, so place your traps while staying hidden from them until the time comes. When you trap a hook, use only one trap. Try to trap a bit further away so you make survivors crouch all the way to the object, giving you more time. The natural trigger radius of the trap is fairly large, so abuse that as much as you can. The trigger radius add-ons will be particularly helpful with this tip. I won't tell you exactly where to place your traps, that's your job. I just gave you some advice by showing you some cool tricks. Now you need to analyze the maps and look around you as you're playing. Try to think where they will go, how you can counter a specific loot. Don't be afraid to experiment with the hag. You should never see the number 10 above your traps ever again in your games after you've placed your first trap. That means you should always have traps on the map at all times. The hag is the only killer that can technically be at multiple places at once. Abuse this. Another important thing to consider is that sometimes it's a better choice to leave a pallet unbroken and chase down a survivor with bloodlust if there are no traps in the area. The hag's normal speed is 4.4 meters per second. This gives her the normal killer movement speed of 4.6 meters per second. Hag movement speed buff when? 15 seconds from the start of a chase. This can waste a lot of time, so this is only safe to use when you're dealing with two survivors at the most. There are several variables you have to consider when playing the hag that you don't even have to think about when playing any other killer. And this is why people who play the hag the same as the other killers think she's bad. Because they don't think about all the other ways to use her power other than the obvious and mindlessly try to chase survivors. One other important thing that you should remember is to constantly lay traps. Which leads me to time management. As the game goes on, survivors are going to trip your traps. 
If you're not laying traps as you go, you're going to find yourself chasing a survivor with no traps on the ground, taking away all of her strengths. Try to always have a minimum of four traps on the ground at all times during the match. If you down someone, lay a quick trap before you pick them up. This can also bring flashlight survivors out in the open, giving you a chance to smack them. Did you lose a survivor? Lay a quick trap before you leave the area. Is there a survivor hiding nearby? Lay a quick trap before the chase starts, especially if there's a pallet nearby. It might just push them out of the area into another where you have more traps waiting that they don't know about. If you've traveled across the map and the gates aren't powered without laying a trap, you've made a mistake. If you're looking for survivors and you have 7 to 9 traps available, you need to put some down. Lay traps constantly. If you think you're saving time by not laying a trap, you're actually wasting time in the future. You'll know what I mean when a survivor goes through an area you thought about laying a trap in, but didn't. Whenever possible, when in a chase where the survivors can see you, do not change direction to mind game. Because the hag's movement speed is slower, it's less effective and will not fool a decent survivor. Mind games are only safe with tall obstructions where the survivor cannot see you clearly. If you think a survivor can see you while in a loop, follow through and make them drop the pallet to move to another area. Don't break it and continue the chase. If they continue the loop, however, you'll be forced to break it. And of course, this advice isn't a rule. You'll need to make the call yourself while you're in the moment. The last thing I want to bring up for time management is when to leave a survivor on the ground. Knockout can be very powerful for taking multiple survivors off gens for a good amount of time. Not only is the downed survivor not doing gens, but any survivors who choose to go look for them aren't either. Try not to leave someone next to a gen that's been worked on or in the middle of the map. These are the easiest locations to stumble upon a dying survivor. If a survivor runs to the edge of the map or into a corner so you can't hook them, this is the perfect place to leave them on the ground. If you're dealing with a survive with friends group, knockout isn't as effective since the downed survivor can just relay directions or general areas to get her up again. Um, where are you at forever? I'm behind the- yeah, head straight to me, run- just run straight. Mm -hmm. To the left a little. To the right now. Ah, aha. You really only want to leave a body on the ground when they run to the edge of the map, um, when they're not in the center of the map, you suspect that they're the only one in the area, or when you've downed someone with Make Your Choice and you just start chasing the rescued survivor. You get the idea, so use your best judgment when making this decision in your matches. Now that you, hopefully, want to play Hag with the gold to do well with her, you have to endure the most difficult part. Place down a few preemptive traps. I honestly, my trap placement with the hag needs to get better. I'm not too adept at it. Uh, I really need to work on my shit with that. But the only way that you're going to learn is to just bash your face against it and figure out what you're doing wrong. Practicing. Like the nurse, she requires a significant time investment to do well with. You'll have to train yourself to see the area you're currently in and place a trap where you expect a survivor to be at any point during the match. You also need to remember the static areas of a map and try to get good traps in those areas as soon as you can. But most importantly, you need to learn how to predict where survivors will be later in the match. When you start to see the popular streamers playing more hag with this loadout and using these techniques, you'll know where they learned it from. Okay, we've got um, a tactic on this one. Can you remember? You just put it at all the spots where uh, you think people are going to run to. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it entertaining and informational. It was quite a labor of love to get this thing done. It's the longest video I've ever put together. If there's anything else you want to ask or learn about, uh, I invite you to join our Discord. I'll provide a link in the description. We'd love to have you. If you found this video useful, please let me know. It's really encouraging to get feedback, whether it's positive or negative. 
I think I can finally play some Dead by Daylight now. I'll see you guys in the fog. <laughs>